So let us turn now to another member of Theresa May's Conservative Party. He is voting tonight, and he's Sir John Redwood, a veteran skeptic of the European Union, one of the most prominent supporters of Brexit, and he's extremely critical of the deal negotiated by the Prime Minister. Sir John, welcome to the program. Yeah. Um, you just heard me talk to Sam Jima, also in your party. He also plans to vote against, but has somewhat different views. Rory Stewart has just said, or did say, that he plans to vote for because he thinks it's a way to heal the party, heal the nation, because it does two things gets out of the EU as you want but protects the national economy and protects people in the best way possible you're vigorously shaking well your he's head. wrong on both counts isn't is he? he? But, but he's paid to say that because he's a government minister and the rule of the game as you well know is if you take money to be a government minister you have to support everything the government says it believes in and we've had 21 resignations from the government and from the Conservative Party senior positions over this matter there have never been so many resignations over a single issue because most of us recognize that this agreement is not a deal it doesn't solve the trade problems it doesn't offer a future partnership it doesn't get us out of the european union it leaves us locked under their law codes paying them huge sums of money on a far worse basis than just staying in as a member. Well, so right. It's united it was always to going to be worse. Voters. You're right, it is it's united. Unpopular. But it was always going to be worse. There was no amount of mathematics or juggling figures that was going to say that leaving this productive relationship in terms of economics and other things not was going to be better we do just in the want immediate to leave. future. We voted to leave. We didn't vote to have an agreement. We leave voters knew exactly what we were voting for. We were promised by Remain and the government that we'd be leaving the single market and the customs union because they get in the way of our competitiveness and our prosperity. So you... They aren't good news, they're bad news. We want to cut our tariffs. We want free trade agreements with many countries around the world mm -hmm. we're not allowed to sign. We want to spend our own money on our priorities. £39 billion is a lot of money to the United Kingdom, but it will be more than that. And that is the cost of this shocking agreement, which no sensible MP could conceivably vote for. And the public is more clever than the MPs, and the public know this is a lousy agreement. The Brexit voting public know this is nothing like Brexit, and the Remain public don't want it either. But so you know this what? Parliament will reject it decisively. We know that. And we need to leave without an agreement. But you see, it's this, very is, simple. this is something that almost nobody can understand you saying. And you're very vehement and you're very passionate, but you ignore the fact that there is no majority back there for what you're saying right now. And you seem to ignore the fact... Is. No, there isn't. Not for a no-deal. Parliament deal. has legislated... Not for, for a, a no-deal. Parliament has legislated for a no-deal exit. That is what we have done. I mean, that's the default option. No, that's what Parliament legislated for. We legislated the EU withdrawal agreement and the Article 50 letter. And those two things take us out with no agreement. I explained it to Parliament at the you time when they voted for it. You might have done, but there is still for no it. majority for it. And but the people matter. of this country don't want it. There was a majority for two years for a no-deal Brexit, which is exactly what we're going okay. to have, unless somebody in Parliament finds a way Fine. to create a majority to change the law. But it's and they do as not if have a majority to agree to change the law. It's almost as if you are so passionate about this, having, by the way, put a no-confidence vote in the Prime Minister and lost, and yet you seem well, to want to... Well, your group did. The hardliners, the so-called hardliners, the ERG, Jacob rees people who you support, did it, and you lost the vote. And yet you're still trying to rule the debate. And I want to know why you, well, we who are so for the smart... Majority. We speak for the majority. Sir, there is no majority in we Parliament for We speak for, for the 17.4 million Brexit, voters no deal. who won the referendum. We've had 46 years in the European Union, and those of us who lost the first referendum were as good as gold. We didn't challenge the EU, we stayed in it for 25 mm -hmm. years before we demanded another referendum when it had completely changed. We behave democratically, okay. and we expect people to behave democratically Everybody's when we win a referendum. Everybody's talking about democracy, and everybody wants and to we respect speak democracy. Majority, and a majority mm -hmm. of the House voted to leave with no agreement. Well, uh, okay, you, well, you can do. say it's that. Fine, fact. fine. There is still no majority for a no-deal Brexit. But they, now, they voted for it. Well, they may be changing their they minds. They may have changed then. their minds. Fine, but fine. how are they going to change I want their to minds ask you facts and, and figures. express legislation? I want to ask you facts and figures, and you are very economically and financially savvy. In yeah. fact, and we you called people faster. to take their investments out of this country. No, I did not. That is completely well, you wrote untrue. It. You wrote it in the FT, and no, you got criticised for it. I did not. That is it. completely untrue. Okay, well, I'll get it and read it you then. You must get that correct. I certainly will. I'll get it and read unfair. it. Um, I've always said that Brexit will add to our GDP, not subtract from it. And I've shown how, with the right policies, with the money we can spend, we will improve the growth rate, not reduce it.
Time to look further afield as the UK economy hits the brakes. Okay, so uh, this is what researchers at the, you know, Q Leuven Center for Economic Studies says. A total loss of gross value added in the UK would amount to a 4.47% of GP. Unemployment would rise over half a million. Well, that was this what is they from said the MIT. They voted to leave, and that was all completely untrue. No, but it, no, 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 no. That's they, voting. You know better than said I do. The I know. Short term but you know. Treasury official yes, forecast yes. and the IMF forecast was we would by now have 500,000 more people right. out of work. We've got hundreds of thousands more people in work. It was a lie then, and what you're saying you is a lie again. Not what I'm saying. What well, you're just I'm quoting reading it. quotes. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm not questioning people's mm. patriotism like mm. you did of, of, of Rory Stewart saying that they're paid to say their their uh, their, their views. Well, it's just a statement of well, fact. Well, I don't know. I mean, are you paid too? No, I'm not paid by the government. And I, I wouldn't an be able to serve in this government all the time it follows this policy. Right. Now, a hard Brexit, according to the Bank of England, would mean an immediate deep recession for the UK, permanently lower living standards for many of its citizens. Yeah, well, that's completely wrong. And that's what Forbes says. And I'm not quoting pinko leftist rags. I'm co well, quoting... Well, my forecast you know, is that we will have 1% extra growth. But in, what is it based on? Based, what if you're wrong well, and let, millions let of people are out of work? Well, let me explain what it's based on, because these other forecasts are based on nothing, or they're based on the assumption... But these are Experts we, whose jobs well, it I'm is. an expert as well, so what, what uh, different experts disagree. Economy. Yes, okay. indeed. And my forecast says that if you spend the 39 billion in two tranches, about 20 billion a year in each of the first two years after we leave in March, uh, that gives you a, a bonus. I've assumed there will be some reduction in exports to the EU. There will be a bonus in trade with non-EU because I'm pro projecting cutting the tariffs on the rest of the world while we bring the tariffs in line mm -hmm. for everybody. And I'm also assuming there will be quite a lot of import substitution because of the impact of tariffs on EU exports. Okay. And that comes out at a 1% net gain. Mm -hmm. What happens when this is defeated in Parliament tonight? Well, the Prime Minister, if she's wise, will then see that we gave her very good advice that this uh, agreement couldn't conceivably go through and she will accept the verdict of Parliament. And she will then go to Brussels with her negotiating team and complete the negotiations on all the other issues that we need to tidy up for when we leave on the 29th of March with no withdrawal agreement. And the work I'm is going well to come advanced. back to you after the, the no work, withdrawal the work is and a well no advanced. deal Brexit. And in a few months, and, I'm and going to ask you what I you look think forward about to them it. Okay. But we've heard that Calais Dover will run, run perfectly smoothly. But, the but I've heard the Calais opposite. doesn't want to lose our business. I've but heard I've the opposite, the that they're very Calais different on-off vehicles going into Dover than, for instance, in Portsmouth. So a lot of stuff that we've been yeah, told Calais is Dover not is necessarily true. Calais Dover is going to work because the, the head of Calais Port has put in the necessary facilities and has made a public declaration he doesn't want to lose any business over this, so it will run smoothly. Right. Stop scaremongering. Right. It's all nonsense. I'm not scaremongering. I want an independent country just as America is an independent country. Why can't I have an independent country? Now the public have voted for it, and we will be better off if we govern wisely, which I wish us to do. Okay, and we will have you back once this has all been resolved, and we'll see what the facts and figures it tell us. It will be wonderful as John long Wedworth, as we just leave. Thank you very much indeed. I know you have to go and vote.